Welcome back. This is Empress Lisi and I'm delighted to have you here on my YouTube channel. So grateful to be talking into our ego dialogue, this presence that pervades society and pervades everyone that nobody is talking about. Yes, it's true. Everyone has a sacred element within them called the ego. This is a construct based on everything you've ever suffered through. Every past pain that has ever come up in your life has formed a very long list of rules. And these rules are intended to keep us safe and protected from harm. Unfortunately, our ego is kind of like a really overbearing, overprotective parent. Don't do that. You're going to die. <laughs> uh, my ego is always very dramatic that the more I reveal myself and the more I show up in my truth, that I will be left by everyone and end up a hobo on the streets. So it's really, really interesting to begin a dialogue where we start giving permission for ourselves to actually acknowledge that there's a part of ourselves that's a total stress freak, that is totally hung up on all the ways that we could be hurt or damaged or taken from or betrayed or suffer one of the many things that you've already suffered in the past. I want you to be able to understand that from my perspective, this part of us that I call the ego is actually going to be with us our whole lives. I don't know if that's good news. I remember, uh, you know, sharing that with a few people when I first reached that conclusion and, you know, the disappointment drops in, but then the truth kind of drops in and pervades through as well. Because if our ego is going to be a lifelong presence in our lives and is really related to our life here on earth, then we need to really start learning how to respond to it, knowing that it's actually not going to go away. You're unlovable. You're not good enough. You're unworthy. These are very, very typical comments from our ego that tries to shut us down, keep us small and minimize us so that we don't upset anyone else's apple cart and so that we don't put ourselves in a place of potential danger where we can actually experience anything similar to what we did in the past. Acknowledging the ego is one of the most profound things that you can do to feel more power in your life. For me personally, every time I st take a step deeper into my truth, I activate my ego. And what's so difficult about this is that I actually use it as a double confirmation. Okay, so when I receive an intuitive prompting to you know, release a new book or uh, make a new offer, that I always activate ego dialogue. So whenever you do feel that ego resistance, I love suggesting for my clients that they use that as double confirmation. Okay, because if your ego does not want you to proceed in it to that area, it will definitely take you closer to your truth. So what's the objective of ego? Ego is really that firm, loving parent that actually wants to keep you safe, but just screams at you and yells at you all the time, unfortunately. And the most important thing to understand is that the more we try to ignore our ego dialogue, the louder it will become. It's very, very important that we don't try and dismiss it or make ourselves busy or that we um, try and drown it out with mood-altering substances or behaviors. Um, it's really, really important to be able to acknowledge what it's saying. Now, I love supporting my clients to learn how to actually have a conversation with their ego based on honor. As we allow ourselves to remember that our ego is only there to protect us and keep us safe, when it tells us that my next book is going to be crap and when it tells me that everyone's going to leave me the more that I show up and share who I really am on my YouTube channel, it can really put you into a place where you really think about just running and hiding in a hole. It'll call you all the things that you were called in your past that hurt you the most. What's very important is to be able to hear it. I say, yes, ego, I understand that you're very concerned that the more I reveal myself on my YouTube channel, I'm making myself vulnerable to the whole world, giving them access to be able to watch my videos, learn about my heart and perceive my vulnerabilities, my insecurities. What's really beautiful is that as you enter an honoring dialogue where you understand that your ego is trying to keep you safe, it actually is like, well, that's good then. Yeah, I'm glad that you know, because you could totally screw this thing up and it'll come back to me with more negative dialogue. And I go, yes, I understand because I know that you really want to keep me safe. I know that when I've revealed the truth of who I am in the past, that I've been shut out, shut down and left alone. I know that that hurt us and I know you want to protect that me from that happening again. The more we can understand the intention of our ego to keep us safe and protected, the more supported we are 
to be able to then turn to our higher self and actually ask for that higher guidance. I love thinking of my higher self as um, the part of me that has already ascended, that has already transcended all, learned all of her lessons, is the full embodiment of all of her truth. And she's way beyond the future, but she's with me now. And as I tune into her and I ask her for her guidance and I ask her for um, her direction and the truth that she can see, I take her on as a second advisor. What's really dangerous and damaging is that when our ego is our only advisor, okay, and when we don't even know it's our ego and we think it's ourselves, <laughs> what can happen is that we think we're going insane, okay? No one will say this socially, but we've all had moments where we go, mm, I could be safer in a snuggly jacket, in a nice little cocooned space, and uh, I thought it, we've all thought it, we've all been there. It's really important to understand that this dialogue is not you. When I talk about you, I'm talking about the soul and the truth of who you are. Our ego is the collection of our rules based on our past pain. It's trying to prevent us from ever going through that pain again. So as we take it on as an advisor and we just hear it, yes, ego, yes, I understand, I'm listening. Yeah, I know that could be dangerous, but I'm really feeling drawn to do it anyway. And then we turn to our second advisor, our higher self, and we take her perspective into consideration. If we're only taking ego's perspective into consideration, we can easily spiral down fast. As I turn to my higher self and I receive her divine perspective, what happens for me is that it balances out and I can really see the very two different trajectories and perspectives that are coming in. And then I can really sit in myself and choose who would I really like to guide me. Would I like ego to guide me or would I like my higher self to guide me? And the more we can remind ourselves that we have a choice about whose guidance we actually take on board, the more empowered we become to be able to take those steps outside of our comfort zone. All of my clients come to me to create an experience of something they've never had before, whether that's being slim or uh, opening up to friendship with women or opening up to true love, aligning with their sacred divine gifts or aligning with their purpose. It doesn't matter what they are coming to me for. They haven't seen it modeled and they haven't experienced it. In our life, whenever we're going towards something that we haven't encountered before, anything that's unknown or unexperienced, it activates our ego and sends alarm bells. No, you can't do this. It's going to hurt you for this and this and this and this and this reason. And it's kind of endless. So once again, just practicing, acknowledging, honoring. Yes, I hear you, ego. I know you want to keep me safe. Are there any other concerns that you have? I want to hear them all. I understand. I know you're scared for me. I don't know what will happen. I know you want to keep me safe. Turn to your higher self. And I promise you that the power that you'll receive by turning to your higher self will give you such a more powerful capacity to be able to step into new situations. The more we can acclimatize ourselves to sit in these new situations, the more we allow ourselves to open up to what we truly desire. I personally believe that if you long for something, it's intended for you. As Rumi says, what you seek is seeking you. Please trust your beautiful heart that if there is a yearning there, that's something that is meant for you. And I promise you that ego will never stop telling you all the reasons why you can't have what you have. But I promise as you turn to your higher self that she will confirm to you that you are worthy, that you are going to have it and that it's going to be magical and that it's going to be beautiful. This has been true for me for every situation, healing my eating disorder, attracting true love, acknowledging and embracing my gifts, allowing myself to align on purpose and have a prospering, successful business, all experiences that I didn't have that my ego resisted like intensely. So I'm in it with you. I want to let you know that it is very, very difficult. And I hope that what I've shared in this video can really support you beautiful is really not easy, but I promise everyone is going through this. And if you practice some of these skills and some of these strategies, it'll get easier. I promise. Uh, thank you so much for being here. And if you have any questions about what I've shared, please write in the comment below. I love interacting with people. 
If you did receive value from this and you found that it could be helpful, you're intrigued to play with a concept, please give it a thumbs up. It's so lovely to be able to see that you're liking what I'm creating and you're finding it valuable. The more people that like these videos, the more people are invited to watch them. So I'm really excited to be able to show up and share my heart with the world. I have such a deep desire to help the whole world learn, if they will, how to heal their own hearts. I believe in utopia. I believe in Zion. I believe in heaven on earth, that all of us are divine, uh, that we all have the capacity to be able to create prosperity and peace in our lives. But if we follow the rule book that's been given to us from our ego, it's just not going to happen. So I am cheering for you. And if you like this video and you'd like to check out more from Lisey Black, I'll be back uploading regularly. Please subscribe. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time.